Just wait a minute. We got a job for you. I don't want no job. Why not? It's too much, too much like work, man. Listen, this is strictly nowhere. You got a lot of sick, old-fashioned ideas about working hard and living clean, and it's all a lot of junk. I'm too tired to listen. I mean, work is for suckers. You know, I like my job, Skipper. I wouldn't want to lose it. I'm sitting in my car at the Speedway station right outside the Lincoln Tunnel. If you go through the Lincoln Tunnel and you take the first exit for Weehawken, you'll end up at the Speedway station. It used to be a Hess. And currently, uh, regular is $2.75 a gallon. Diesel set you back $3.09 a gallon. And this car that I'm driving, this 1994 Mercedes E320, requires premium unleaded fuel only. It even says so right underneath the fuel gauge. And premium unleaded 93 octane at this station is currently $3.15. So I was down to a quarter of a tank, so I stopped by to gas up because I'm headed out to Morris Plains and uh, I'm not sure I've ever been to Morris Plains before but I'm going out there as part of my job search there is a live remote out there for a radio station called WDHA which has been around for something like 40 years they're located in Cedar Knolls New Jersey they're part of the Beasley media group and they play mostly rock and roll and heavy metal and um, I have a weird connection to WDHA, but first let me tell you what I'm going out there to do. I'm going out there to give my resume and cover letter and a thumb drive containing on-air samples of my radio work to the program and music director, Terry Carr, who has been there quite a while. Thank you. Just getting my receipt for the fuel. Let's see what I paid to gas up. I paid $38.33, yeesh. So, uh, Terry Carr, who has been there, I mean, at least as long as I know, because back in 2002, I was going to do some freelance audio engineering for them. Specifically, I was going to go set up some live remote and uh, I got the job through my friend and former WFMU audio engineer, John Fogarazzo. And uh, the problem is I was driving this crappy 1987 Jeep Wrangler at the time. And just as I got over the Pulaski Skyway, the Jeep caught on fire. The whole undercarriage of the Jeep erupted in flames. And uh, I thought I was going to die. I had to get out of the Jeep stand on the side of Route 1 and 9 watching it burn and if it wasn't for some guy driving the Holiday Inn courtesy van it would have just been consumed by fire because I didn't have a fire extinguisher in the vehicle so this guy stopped and he put the fire out and I kept the Jeep for I don't know another six months to a year before I finally got rid of it but um, I was looking through my journals, my diaries, whatever you want to call them last night and I managed to find the entry about that particular incident. And it was, let's see, January, February, March. It was April 19th, 2002. Now, the thing is, I, I really let John Fogarazzo down. He was very pissed off because I think he had planned a day off with his wife. And they were going to go away. And as it turns out, because I couldn't get to the remote, he had to scramble and go, so he was pissed off. I never got any other audio engineering work out of WDHA, but it gets worse because at the time I was doing my show Aerial View, and I went on the air, and um, I spoke about having met this person, Terry Carr, the program and music director, because at some point John had me come down to WDHA and I met her in person and uh, I went on the air and I said things that were kind of stupid and I was trying to be funny but I talked about this chicken leather pants I mean I, I don't even remember really exactly what I said but I do remember that they heard it uh, people connected with the station heard it Terry Carr ended up hearing it and it was really stupid because even back then the show was archived so it wasn't that hard to go and find the archive and hear it and I ended up in my memory 
having to call Terry Carr and apologize to her because John Fagarazzo felt like his job was going to be in jeopardy unless I did that very thing. And I may have even sent her some kind of note in the mail or something in the mail. I, I don't remember. I just remember it turned into like this big deal just because I said something really stupid on the radio. And so that's who I'm going to see out in Morris Plains at Arthur's Tavern for this live WDHA remote. Uh, Terry Carr's show is on from noon to three weekdays. And she is out there as we speak doing all kinds of giveaways and there's drink specials and the whole thing. And so this morning I was up at by about 8.15. Today is Thursday, August 23rd. I had started working on it last night, but I, I had to put together a resume and I had to put together a cover letter and I had to last night I found a bunch of audio samples of me not only on Sirius XM but also uh, an aerial view show I did called Led Zeppelin Karaoke and a few other odds and ends and I put them all on a thumb drive and I printed out this resume and cover letter on really nice paper and stuck it in an envelope and that envelope was attached to uh, a book about Spinal Tap that I'm going to hand to Terry Carr and it's a book it's wrapped, it was meant to be a Christmas gift for a friend of mine it ended up never getting to my friend it's been sitting around since Christmas I'm going to have to get my friend something else, I'm not sure he would have really dug a book all about Spinal Tap anyway, but I paid I don't know, I think uh, $25 for this book at the last NAB show in Manhattan, the convention for the National Association of Broadcasters, there was a guy there selling all kinds of books, and one of the books that I purchased was this History of Spinal Tap. It's a pretty, it's a pretty interesting book. There's no doubt in my mind that Terry Carr already owns this book. That doesn't matter. It's still sealed. She could re-gift it if she wants. I don't care, but... I'm going out there because I found out through this job board that I learned of from a former Sirius XM co-worker uh, that they're looking for part-time help on air at WDHA. And I know a guy who does a show at Sirius XM, but he also has been working at WDHA for quite a while. He was doing nights for about the last nine months, and now I guess he's doing fill-ins and other kind of stuff, maybe weekend work, I'm not really sure, but, and I don't know what this on-air part-time position might be, what the hours might, it's obviously part-time, but I have a feeling it's going to be like an overnight thing, I have a feeling it's going to be a weekend thing, so I'm a little torn because, you know, I obviously I need work, I need a job, it would be nice to have some extra income, and maybe I could work my way up to something else there but I'm also thinking that Terry Carr is going to want me to drive back and forth to Cedar Knolls which is way the fuck out on Route 80 in the evenings and on the weekends so it could end up being a massive pain in the ass for I don't know God knows what they want to pay but $25 an hour how much could they pay to do this is the question so uh, but I'm also excited about it because it's an on-air position and that's cool because everything else I've been applying for is not on-air stuff and I feel like on-air is probably what I do best being on the radio I'm excited about it because maybe I could take phone calls you know uh, who knows um, but there's part of me that wonders if Terry Carr remembers who the fuck I am. And if she sees my name, which, let's face it, is pretty rare. You don't encounter a lot of sackuses out there. The ones I know of all happen to be my relatives. And it's quite possible that she's going to take one look at me or one look at my resume and go, Oh, aren't you that guy? 
from WFMU who said that shit about me on your show. And believe me, I, I mean, what I said, if memory serves, it wasn't, like, terrible. I think I just said something about this chick in these leather pants trying to be cool or something. I don't even fucking know. But, man... It was 16 years ago, so I'm like, I'm like, even if she does remember it, is she going to penalize me for something I said 16 years ago? Is she going to say, yeah, fuck off, there's no way I'd ever hire you? I don't know, but I feel like I need to look her in the eye, I need to hand her this thing. I emailed it this morning when I was done with it, I also invited her to a shared Dropbox folder that has the resume and the cover letter in it and has all the audio samples, but I feel like putting it in her hand is not a bad idea. It's a beautiful day. I'm getting out of the house. I'm traveling westbound on Route 80 right now, and Arthur's Tavern sounds like fun. I'm going to have a mojito. I'm going to order some food. I'm going to look at the live broadcast. And uh, as I get a little further west, I'm hoping I can actually pick up the signal for WDHA, which I believe is 105.5. Matter of fact, if you'll indulge me, I'm going to try to tune it in as we speak here. Yeah, that's that's WDHA, 105.5. Sounds like some Molly Hatchet. Do you want to hear my impression of the singer, Molly Hatchet singer? Flirting with disaster. There you go. There we are. I'm going to sign off here. This is Job Story, and this is Chris T. Headed out to uh, what may end up being my next boss. Heading out to see what might be my next boss. Who the hell knows? All right, I fucked up. Right lane must turn right. Oh, well. Looks like Arthur's Tavern's off on the left. Alright, I have arrived at Arthur's Tavern. Parking lot's pretty full. Hey, it's me, Chris T, and I'm standing outside of Arthur's Tavern. So I've decided to go in the front way to get the full experience. There's somebody standing out here with a WDHA shirt on. All right, uh, it's me, Chris T, here on Job Story. I am back in the car. It's pretty warm in this car, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, just left the WDHA live broadcast. Showed up there at 1 o'clock. It's now uh, 5 to 3. Entered a couple of the raffles. Didn't win anything, but I did get to speak with Terry Carr. I handed her resume, cover letter, thumb drive, all in an envelope, along with a gift which was, again, a book about Spinal Tap that she probably already has, but who knows. We chatted briefly. At one point, I got up to show her the news about Ed King, 
of Leonard Skinner who died today and she had already known about it so I kind of felt stupid. I uh, thought about asking if I could join her on mic but then I thought mm, that's kind of presumptuous and so I didn't and uh, had a cup of chili got the steak sandwich which uh, unbeknownst to me they charged extra for the arugula and the blue cheese, which I didn't want and I didn't like on my steak sandwich. So instead of being thirteen ninety five, it was like sixteen ninety five. And then I got some bread pudding for dessert. So and I had a mojito and some water. And so with the tip it came to forty eight dollars for lunch. And I'll look at that as an investment in myself if I get a job. On the air at WDHA. Along with the $30, $25, whatever the fuck it was, Spinal Tap book. We're up to $75, $80 of an investment in this. So uh, we'll see how it goes. But she did get my email. And um, I'll I'll wait to hear. Right now I'm going to drive home. This is job story number 16. Hey, it's me, Chris T., uh, driving back from the WDHA remote where I went to meet with uh, Terry Carr and uh, getting stuck in some really shitty traffic because of construction work that's going on, roads being closed, detours. I'm trying to avoid 495 construction over by my house by the Lincoln Tunnel so I thought I would wend my way home through Teaneck and uh, there's road construction here as well and now I'm trying to make a left and nobody wants us to make a left everybody's like fuck you I'm not letting you make a left and it's taken it's taken a long time to get home Let's put it that way. And I am just going to go because fuck this guy. And I'm going to block traffic if that's what I have to do. Come on, man. Pull up. Let's fucking go. Push back. So, I turned the recorder back on not to complain about traffic, but to share some depressing news that I found out. Uh, I reached out to my former SiriusXM co-worker and asked him how much they pay at WDHA to work part-time. And uh, take a guess at what the hourly rate is. Okay, I'll tell you what it is, because <laughs> your guess is probably wrong. It's fourteen dollars an hour. That's right, fourteen dollars an hour. Now, in a lot of places in the United States currently, there's a minimum wage of fifteen dollars an hour. Fourteen dollars an hour. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I could work for $14 an hour, in all honesty, because, again, this car requires premium. I filled it up on the way out there, $3.15 for a gallon, and uh, driving out to Cedar Knolls, I think, would be 30 miles, 35 miles, if they didn't let me work from home. So that's at least a gallon of gas. Let's say... uh, three gallons of gas to go there and back maybe four gallons of gas so you're looking at ten dollars already in gas I I don't know it just I couldn't believe it when he told me that I couldn't believe that that's that's what they pay people to work part time fourteen dollars an hour of course a place like that if you want to get on the staff you pretty much have to start As a part-timer, you have to make your way up. So that would be a reason, but I'm I'm not feeling terribly hopeful right now. I'll be honest with you. So, so there's that. 
an update as of 6 p.m. Monday night. As I'm recording this, nobody from WDHA has reached out to me. Thanks for listening to Job Story number 16. Stick around. I've got a bonus for you. I've been digitizing a lot of cassettes and digital audio tapes and mini discs and finding some material. And up next is an original song of mine that has employment as a theme. Don't forget Job Story is available via Apple and Google Podcasts, Google Play, iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, and YouTube. Go to shows.pippa.io slash job story for details and submit your job story at jobstorypod at gmail.com or in the Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash jobstorypod. You can also record a job story of 90 seconds or less at speakpipe.com slash job story or record a longer job story by calling way for job pod. That's the number four, way for job pod. Please share a job story with your friends and family. Job story on iTunes and elsewhere. Until next time, this is Chris T. Working hard and hardly working. I'm a part-time lover and a full-time fool And I'm sitting there thinking of you You don't want me on your full-time staff You wouldn't cut my love in time in half And now I'm not so overjoyed Because I'm under his light Well, I went and took my grievance to the union man if I could arbitrate a better plan He said, Mr. Take a number and stand in line It seems everyone's been shafted by that girl of mine I'm a part-time lover and a full-time fool I've been put out of work by you I'm a part-time lover and a full-time fool I've been underemployed by you well, I went and took my grievance to the union man To see if I could arbitrate a better plan He said, Mr. Take a number and stand in line It seems everyone's been chapped by that girl of mine I'm a part-time lover and a full-time fool I've been put out of work by you I'm a part-time lover and a full-time fool I've been underemployed by you. I said I'm underemployed by you. I've been underemployed by you. I can't get enough work anymore. So, working hard or hardly working? <laughs> I said working hard or hardly working. Working hard or hardly working? Working hard or hardly working? That's a simple question! Are you A, working hard, or B, show? <laughs> Suppose you tune in.